a physical healing. And that is for his eternal life, which is something good that we all should pursue and look forward to, to work with. And therefore Christ gave him his answer and he said, if you want to enter life, he taught him about the commandment which is do not kill, do not lust, don't steal, things like that, and you know the rest of it. So which means, if you want it in a life, you have to work and live by the commandment of God. The commandment of God also will bring and manifest the love that in our hearts. Christ told us in John 14, 15, he said, who loves me will remember my command. This man did not stop with the question of uh, entering eternal life or gaining eternal life. And what is interesting about this young man, he answered Christ that all this I have done. But Christ knows the heart of each one of us and always Christ will give us the true remedy or medicine to heal our souls. So this man, he shows that he have a desire for a, a, per, a perfect life. And again Christ did not reject him but he answered him and he said, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all what you have and give it to the poor and the needy and come and follow me. In Aradtan Takuna Kamilan Fadha Waga Kulamala Wahdi Parana Sakin Mataala Ba'an. So I call this verse is a call of love that God wants us to pay attention to and to pursue, to love God and to love our neighbor as he mentioned. A calling of God of love the first one the first one he said to sell everything. To sell everything, this means to deprive yourself from the things of this world. Because the first thing he said, sell all things. Sell all things, even though it has a, a literal meaning and also a spiritual meaning. But in general, a person can deny himself from all the things of this world for the sake of Christ then this person indeed he loves Christ. So this is one way to say, I love you, to, to, to tell God I love you. The other thing, or the second thing said, or I call it a call of divine love toward God, when he said to give, to give the poor. Giving is a fruit of love. That's understood in the mind of the Holy Fathers. And if we ask ourselves, who would give other than the person have a merciful and loving heart? So giving is also a way to manifest our love or our good heart that has love in it. And the third way or, or the third calling of love is the following of Christ. When he said, come and follow me. When somebody follows someone with his own freedom or her own freedom, this would reflect that that person loves the one he follows. So when we follow Christ, then in the same manner we reflect that or we show that we love Christ too. So basically what I'm trying to say is, if we want to follow Christ, we need to start living his commandment and when we live Christ's commandment will bestow or bring love into our hearts and then this love and also the when we deprive ourselves from the things of this world will lead you when when you don't need anything if you have anything you give it so this will lead you also to the life of giving so the commandment and the love that brings to your heart, the detachment of this world, 
the love of giving, then when we use these, these three virtues, then it's so easy for us to follow Christ. And hopefully we'll, we'll talk a little bit about a little bit about the meaning of to follow Christ or how we follow Him. For some of the people, when they taste the beauty of Christ and the sweetness of Christ, they realize that the, everything in this world is meaningless in compared to Christ Himself. And, and it is true for everyone, but for them was in particular because they taste what Christ is and they felt it was the fulfillment of their soul and the sufficiency, the absolute sufficiency for their souls. That's why we see in our, uh, the history of the church, many of our holy fathers and mothers of the church have sold everything. So they talk literally the word, sell everything, give it to the poor and follow me. And that's exactly what they have done to enter the kingdom of God, to be with Christ, the only beloved uh, one. They, they sold everything and they gave it to the poor. So they will be with the, will obtain or sell everything and to buy the treasure, the true treasure, which is Christ himself. And indeed, if we live back in our life, we will see the same thing, that Christ is the true the treasure for the soul and for uh, the body and, and all the creatures or the whole creation. These holy fathers, they did not only look at it from literally or from the literal point of view. They sold also all the ugly things that was in their hearts. All of the passions, all of the love of this world, the grudges, uh, being stingy, envy, all of these things they sold it, they got rid of And when we say sell or sold, we mean they got rid of these uh, uh, evil deeds. So in this way, when we do that, there is no room anymore in our hearts of the things of this world. Our heart is empty and, and ready to receive the grace of God and to work with the virtues that God would help us to work with. So in this way also, their hearts become totally the position of the Lord of God. Uh, and when we are in that state, when there is nothing else other than God in our hearts and our souls, this is the perfect life and this is the perfection of life. When Christ becomes all in all, everything in our lives, and as St. Paul have experienced that, and he said, I do not live anymore, but Christ lives in me. This is when Christ's life reflected totally in our lives. So when the people see that our behavior, our conduct, totally as Christ would, would like or, or would teach us, then, then we become, uh, in that way, we start the path of, a, of a, a perfection of sorrow. So in the same manner, we hope that we also try to sell or get rid of all of the evil feelings and thoughts and uh, uh, actions that we have. With the grace of God, we sh should never give up. We always should strive to do so. So also our hearts will be empty of the evil things. And the only thing will remain is the grace of God in our hearts. Because uh, evil things, it really uh, will darken the, the mind and also defile the hearts. And what more important, it separates us from God. And without God, we are miserable creatures, nothing but that. So we have to be careful. Therefore, we really need to, to like St. Paul said, to fight the good fight. The good fight. Fight evil with goodness. That's a good fight. And if we happen to be, today we, we heard the, the, the verse which is kind of scary for most of us. And when, he, when Christ said, it's easier for the camel to go through the thread of the needle uh, than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a very, very scary statement. But thank God he said, what it is impossible for man, it is possible for God. But what does that, what that mean? The, the thread of the needle or the, the hole of the needle 
it means the, the narrow road. So basically, if we are of that group, consider ourselves rich materially, then ask God to bestow upon you a merciful and loving God and loving heart so we can glorify God with it. Give, give to those who are in need. And in this way, you glorify God with the things you have. And then you'll be able to follow Christ. Because following Christ, you have to do His deeds, His teaching, His intentions as well. In the same manner, if we're poor materially, then we should ask God for uh, a patient and, and thankful, a thankful heart. And in this manner also, we glorify God too. And this way, and, and Christ for, for those who he said, you know, if you want to follow me, he said to deny yourself, to carry your cross and follow me. For the, the, the rich one, he said to, to sell everything and to follow him. So he left no excuse for any one of us. Some of us may be rich in material, then they could give the poor and the needy and the orphans and the widows. And, and that's perfect religion according to St. James. He said the perfect religion is to take care of the orphans and the needy in their time. And for, for the poor, then it's like Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus have nothing other than pain and illness and, and uh, poverty. And he endured thankfulness. And then in this way he glorified God too. In the same manner, hopefully, we can uh, do the same thing. So the story of today I see it as a, a, a journey of love toward God. And it starts with the doing the commandment of God. And it also grows uh, when we detach ourselves from the things of this world, when we give and when we follow Christ through these verses. And wherever Christ is, we will be. And Christ is in the heavens. And when God willing, the time comes, hopefully when we do His will, we'll be also with Him. I have some uh, comments uh, or, or some notes. If we pay attention to the few gospel we are reading and the, the one today and, and the one to, to, to continue, we find one thing common. And this is Christmas time. And the one thing in common is the life of giving, this virtue of giving. So hopefully, we pay attention to this virtue which is God loves so much and we, we know there are so many don't have anything to eat and you know some of them if not then the church can help in that direction we know so please take advantage of these readings and work with the passages that Christ has tried to give us all so giving is a beautiful 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 virtue that attracts so much grace from God to the heart that He gives or she gives. So remember that. There is another note. Few people ask me, Father Jerry, you start and thinking, I bored you already. Should I continue a little bit more? <laughs> uh, this way you can throw me out and I'm suffering for what I'm doing. You have five minutes. So no, I'll continue, Father. Not much to go. Christmas, about Christmas. Many of us, we see that we have trees in our homes and, and decorated, especially in light. This tradition came a little bit later than, you know, 2,000 years ago, I think, many years ago, but I'm not sure exactly the date. But what it reflects, at least to us, what it means, if we read Exodus or uh, the Act of the Apostles, chapter 7, and the Exodus chapter 3, we see similar stories. When Moses was living in the wilderness for 40 years, at the end of that time, God appeared to him in the bush. I read it very fast in Arabic and I probably read it also fast in English if I can. It says, فَلَمَّا رَأَى مُوسَى ذَلِكَ تَعَجَّبَ مِنَ الْمَنْظَرِ وَفِيمَا هُوَ يَتَقَدَّمْ يَتَطَلَّعْ صَارَ إِلَيْهِ صَوْتَ الرَّبِّ أَنَا إِلَهَ أَبَاءَكْ إِلَهَ إِبْرَاهِيمِ وَإِلَهَ إِسْحَاقُ وَإِلَهَ يَعْقُوبُ 
فارتعن موسى ولم يسر أن يطلع فقال له الرب اخلع نعل رجليك لأن الموضع الذي أنت فيه واقف فيه عليك أرض مقدسة. Uh, in English, I took the Exodus. This is the, in Arabic, I took the, the act of the Apostle. But in the, in the English one, it's a little bit more clear in it. It says, The angel of the Lord appeared to him uh, in a flame of fire. This is very, very important uh, verse. In a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So when he saw the bush burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. That's also a very, very important uh, uh, word to, to listen to. So Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not consumed. And God called him from the midst. This is also another important. God called him from the midst uh, of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and so on. So, this story reflects perfectly and 100% and it is a prophecy uh, pertaining to the Holy Virgin Mary. The bush, the green bush by the way, represents the Virgin Mary and the green represents the virginity. The fire represents God. God is fire and God is light. So, the light or the fire was in her, this is God. And she was not consumed. Consumed means she, did, she wasn't burned. When God came to the womb of the Virgin Mary, in the same manner, the Virgin was not consumed. Because when God came to the Virgin Mary in, in that format, no one can take it. No one. And yet she was not consumed. And yet she was, she was Virgin. She maintained her virginity before, during, and after the birth of Christ. So, the reason that we put these trees in our homes, at least as an Orthodox, we remember the story of Moses when the fire, he saw the fire in the bush to reflect again the coming uh, or the incarnation of Christ through the Virgin Mary. So the fire is God, the bush is the Virgin Mary, and the green, the greenness of the, of the bush uh, is, is the virginity. She was not consumed, she wasn't burned, because uh, with the grace of God in her life, uh, she was able to take God uh, to herself or to, to be a God in her life. So I hope this will give you a, a brief explanation why we have trees in our homes. It's a beautiful thing, it's a good thing, especially if you explain it for your children. It's simple, right? God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God.